Five cars turnovers for Curse this season alone. His nine goals is tied for the team lead with the talented freshman Willem Firth. They have to deal with the big number one in goal in Caleb Fayok. 6'2", 297 pounds in goal for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The leader in goals against in Division One. This will be a fun matchup between two very stylistically different teams as Mark Silos and Tommy Burke do battle in the face-off dot. Face-offs are going to be very interesting as well as Tommy Burke, one of the most seasoned face-off specialists in all of Division One across, playing his first season with the Buckeyes. And eventually, it is won by Johnny Cool, the ground ball. To pick it up for Ohio State, Buckeyes will get first possession. And you're going to see Ohio State's got a number of transfers uh, on this team. Yeah, this is um, transfer central. Low approach. Curse takes advantage of it, comes across the middle, and then he find, finds Blake on the wing, who just shoots it low. Third goal of the year for Aiden Blake on that second midfield line. And this will be the interesting battle to watch as well, to see how Cornell tries and counters Tommy Burke coming into this season, into this game, with a 60 face-off percentage win. Cornell does pick up the face-off here, but not cleanly. Ball was still on the ground, and eventually Kyle Smith is the one who gets the ground ball. And then the clean, clean clear over the timeline. Brendan Staub bringing it over. Now these may be two teams, Cornell more of an odd. It wasn't a situation where he was screened or anything, which I thought it may have been the first time. Um, just, uh, just blows the shot right by him, Alex Marnier. Eighth goal of the year for Alex Marnier. We're all tied up at one. Silos winning a clean face off against Tommy Burke. Mark Silos going low in his shot fizzles wide right. Cornell's got to treasure these opportunities. While they Ohio State's got the early 2 1 lead over Cornell here at Chokoff Field on a rainy day in Ithaca. Christian Guzman here alongside Tom LaFalse. And Tom, Ohio State's made its chances uh, convert, and Cornell just hasn't quite yet. Yeah, I think Cornell still sort of feels like they're settling in in this contest, and Ohio State's done a good job of taking advantage of their opportunities. Now Cornell will get in the ride. A little bit of a wayward pass coming from Tommy Burke, looking to get it back to his defense, but Van Buren able to corral it and eventually... And, but you're seeing that more and more from guys where that, you know, bring the stick to the middle of your body or sometimes even cross it over to protect your hands. And, and there's a nice opportunity. Curse gets on the board for the first time and ties this score at two. And with Fayok and Cage, it feels like that's the area you want to beat them low. Yep, I, I, it does seem to be the scouting report here. Good ground ball pick up there. Van that's Buren, a good job yeah, by no, Van Buren. Ball forced out though. Cadigan's on the ground and the ball back out on the ground once again. And eventually it's picked up by Greg Longermere. Whistle all around. And Cornell's going to get this ball back. I think they're calling it for him getting the stick against his chest, withholding the ball from play. Had that. Well, now you look at the PLL. They get so much whip that that fastest shot, excuse me, that fastest shot contest is all long poles, right? And and it's a weird release. It can come out in different ways. And there he just blows it right by Wyatt Nust. That's the first goal of the year for Justin Scherer. The transfer from Maryland. This Ohio State team with numerous transfers on its team to help out and try and gain some footing in the Big Ten. And a long pull from Johnny Cool will pick this up as well. You know, they had a difficult year last year. They slide, no nothing, um, coming out of that transition. Only the second goal of the year for Blake Island, but this is Ohio State team who we did, weren't expecting to be this explosive offensively. And already four goals in the first 15 minutes. Also helps when you have Tommy Burke at the faceoff X, but he still hasn't won this faceoff cleanly. Walker Wallace is fighting for it alongside Kyle Foster from Ohio State. And eventually Chris Davis is the one with the ground ball. Wallace tries to keep it in. Ohio State will get possession. That was a close call. I thought I thought Wallace was able to get it off to CJ Kirst before he was out of bounds. Referee lock from behind to the front. The goaltender's got to get his feet turned. He's got to get his body turned around. You know, and against a bigger goalie, that's how you can be successful. It's not just going to be stand in front of the cage and rip it as hard as you can. Michael Long, the leading point scorer for Cornell this year. That's his 11th assist and 17th point. And it is a faceoff win momentarily as Hugh Kelleher was the one on the wings there for Cornell, but he had the ball forced out of his cross. And so Ohio State, with less than a minute to go, will hold for the final possession. They can hold here. 
It's an important stop here for Cornell. You want to get out of this quarter, four to three. It is 4-3 after 15 minutes here between Ohio State and Cornell. The Buckeyes holding the advantage over the big red here in Ithaca. And a faceoff violation will give the ball straight over to Cornell. The first one for Tommy Burke. Exciting first quarter. Pretty evenly played. Uh, you know, both teams. A cohort of transfers that Nick Myers has brought to Ohio State in his time recently as head man of the Buckeyes. Well, the transfer game has become more important in the game of lacrosse. Another one of those transfers here, Tommy Burke picks up the faceoff win. One of the biggest transfers of the season of the past cycle. Caleb Fire got the ball poked out of his stick by Kirst, one of the best ri attacking riders. And eventually Silas picks up the ground ball. There's that hidden factor of CJ Kirst that he mentioned at the top of the broadcast. His riding and cost turnovers. And Corn last year, two guy who's been regarding him all game, Bobby Van Buren. And he knows I'm going to the cage here. Uh, just nice and aggressive. Four goals for Kirst in this matchup last year. Two goals already for one of the best goal scorers in Cornell history. And Mark Silas, a clean faceoff win. Yep, he's come out the front a couple times here. Interesting to see Silos take the majority of the faceoffs. Nothing yet from Angelo Petrakis, who we probably expected to split even time with Silos. And for Wertheim, this is something we that Cornell loves to do as well. Wertheim, the former attacker, we're going on the invert. And he'll try to bounce her, but it, as possible. We're going to get a timeout. Doc. She. The two goal stretch here in the first five plus minutes in quarter number two. And all the momentum seems like it's on the side of the big red. I think if you're Cornell, you just got to stay true to the process, right? Keep running your offense. I think Ohio State is going to, you know, keep, keep trying to be. Um, you know, strong at the defensive end, make sure they work through their matchups, and now we've got another of these battles at the faceoff X. Almost checked out all the way, and eventually it's Chris Smith, or Chris Davis, excuse me, who picked up the ball, but it was back on the ground once again, and Ed Sheen is the one who recovers from the scrum. It's interesting, uh, Sheen, who had four goals against Cornell last year, I feel this game with only one goal on the year, and now two on the tally for the sophomore from Delaware, Ohio. And now you're seeing um, different face-off matchup. For both teams, Jack Oldman will take it for Ohio State. Angelo Petrakis for Cornell. Probably well-deserved after the massive scrum that ended the last face-off, and it's Oldman who picks it up. Fifth face-off win and only his 10th attempt for Oldman on the season. And again, Kelleher running wing there for Cornell. By number 45, Alex Six saves for White, Nuss on the game, Assistant but that's his seventh McKenna. goal allowed in Barrier Ohio State. At the, the offense we thought quarter. wouldn't be quite up to par against some of the tougher competition has absolutely shown up and proven some people wrong here. Oldman is staying out there for a face-off against Suarez Silos, and Jack Oldman's going to win it. But no timeout left here. They used their two timeouts, so Cornell try and get him trapped. Moments forced to the ground, and that's going to be a flag thrown on Singer. And the ground ball was also picked up by Ohio State. So Ohio State looking to go maybe on man up. They will, as Meyer's shot was into. And this is called on Kyle Foster to long pull. So this will be very, very important as well as Nick Meyer sends out Tommy Burke to take the face off. Yeah, this is a big face off here if you're Cornell because if you lose it, you're probably going to lose your extra man opportunity. Again, remember they've got a timeout. Ohio State penalty to number four. And Kelleher picks it up after Silas forced it back. Now, because it's a minute, this is enough time for a make it take it sort of situation. You know, you, you come out the front. You see that Cornell's put Jack Follows on the wing, but all the way at the defensive end. So Cornell's got two long poles in the midfield spots. Jack Oldman's taking the face off for Ohio State. Follows almost picked up that ground ball, but it looks like no one will get a goal before the halftime horn sounds. Follows does get the shot off, but it will go whistle wide. 
and a frantic, hectic first quarter comes to an end. And a Pat who is, came into this game with a 60.9 face-off win percentage. The combination of Mark Silas and Angelo Petrakis have made the face-off battle 7-7 seven, seven each. Well, and Burke is actually below 50%. He'll get a face-off wing here as Ohio State will get the first possession of the second half. And now he's exactly 50%. <laughs> <laughs> Brent Pacheco with Yeah, it's been one of these games where it just seemed like every quarter. time Cornell got close um, to tying it, Ohio State would get the next goal. The first goal of the game was scored by Aiden Blake at 10.31 in the first quarter. That was the first and only lead for Cornell up until this point. And the ball squirting now. Officials are discussing, they have no idea who's got the ball. They'll come together now and decide who's got possession. And the ball is going to Cornell as Eddie Rahill will pick it up on the sideline. The ground and it just snuck over the top shoulder of Nuss. No one expecting that, but Ed Sheen We'll pick up the goal, and now we're all tied up at eight. That's big for Sheena as well. Four goals was the last time these two teams played for number 10 in red. Picks up his first goal. Ohio State goal and Tommy Burke with another faceoff win. Assist from number 34, Blake Island. Jalen from Island at 11.06, mark third quarter. Pass, Ray Hill right there to pick it up. Cornell looking in transition, Cadigan over to Kirsten, and he'll settle things down. Cornell had a little bit of space, looked like Fayot came off the pipe. This is a five point game for Michael Long. Two goals and three assists. He's up to 21 points on the year in only the fourth game of the season for Cornell. But Ohio State, Gets the important face-off win. Another win there for Tommy Burke. Yeah, this is where it gets dangerous. Tommy Burke now starting to roll. Owned his craft at Vermont last year with a six. Every sport needs its quarterback, its leader on the field, a man who's giving directions to everyone, and it feels like Michael Long has been that guy this season when he's been healthy at X. Again, not healthy last season, only seven gains for number one in red, but now six points for Michael Long today. And his latest goal has given Cornell a two-goal lead as Brendan Staub is forced to the floor on this faceoff. C.J. Kirst challenging the long poles, and eventually Marcus Hudgens will pick it up. Well, we've got a flag down here behind the play. A heartbeat. Again, we talked about it in the first half. By feeding from behind, you're making Fayok have to change from where he's looking, turn all the way around, get his feet set, and then try and find the ball. That's the way you can you can beat almost any goaltender, right, with that movement. And that's one of the reasons that Cornell shoots such a high percentage. They have the third best shot percentage in the country. But another faceoff win here for Ohio State. Clark shovels it over to Langramir. This shot might have hit pipe, and it sounds like it did from Alex Marnier. Burke has been on the face-off, so he won't take one here, as Jack Oldman will, but you know that if number nine is out there in right, he's got a very good chance of getting the ball over to Ohio State. It's Oldman and Petrakis, and eventually it's picked up by Chris Davis. He was shoved from behind. As he gets caught on, on the goal, and you knew it, it even maybe seemed like it hurt more on the second time across it, not necessarily yeah. that that's where, where it caught him up. You can see Van Buren getting helped off the sideline right now by a couple of Ohio State trainers. Yeah, only six and a half seconds left in the quarter here. Still enough time to score, but you're gonna see that Ohio State has, I think it's target, target on at the face-off X. I see that correctly. Yeah, it looks like it's still Jack Oldman, it is. Oh, it's 17, not 12. And this half will end. For me, third quarter turnovers, Ohio State with six, Cornell only with two. Cornell being a lot cleaner with the ball and making those opportunities count on the offensive end. Yeah, and a 10-6 advantage for Cornell uh, in ground balls in the corner. Again, another advantage here is Angelo Petrakis picks up the ground ball and the faceoff win against Jack Oldman. 
Now, when does Nick Myers decide to turn to Tommy Burke at the faceoff X for the rest of this game, giving Burke a little bit of a rest right now? As you feel like if faceoffs continue to come, failed clear by Nust on another one of those long shot attempts, Sheen gets checked as he wants. And second goal in a row for Ohio State by Meyer. And I believe the second time in a row uh, assisted by McKenna. Ohio State goal. We start here and it's Jack Oldman who picks up this faceoff win. Interesting also, again, where Hugh Keller only had one goal in the first two games, but had put up four against Hobart. And now picks up a goal here for his sixth goal of the season. But Ohio State, even without Tommy Burke winning faceoff, Greg Langermeer gets the ball checked out as the shot was going wide. I'm surprised. That could have been a push from behind, I thought, against Cornell. has given Cornell a 14-10 lead over Ohio State here at Chokoff Field. Christian Guzman here alongside Tom LaFalse as Tommy Burke picks up another faceoff win. And behind the back pass gets it over to Greg Langermeer. Ohio State looking to move quickly and right out of the timeout, Alex Marnier gets one of those goals back. I tell you what, I was, I was ready to say what in the world is Tommy Burke <laughs> yeah. doing? Because he put this ball in, in sort of harm's way, but just becomes a four on three break. Langamere looks at the point, is able to find Marnier. And this is where it gets dangerous because of Tommy Burke, the Tommy Burke factor at the faceoff dot. One of the best Fogos in the nation. Will do work against Mark Silos. Got to try and work it out here. Interesting to see no pulls for Ohio State on the wings there. Ohio State and it'll work out as Connor Samil is the one who picks up the ground ball. Well, they must decide that, that they want to. Right? He's, I, think, I know he's got a few more ideas here. And you'll see Cornell getting both wing guys all the way down in the defensive end. Try and not let them get a quick score out the front. Trent DeSicco is the one who picks up the ground ball for Ohio State. Trying to move quickly as Jack Oldman has the ball checked out and Silos is the one who picks up the ground ball. Dooley picking it across. 